Hello and welcome to News Round, a recap of stories in the week. I'm Teniola Shoboale, the headlines. Argument ensues at the House of Representatives Committee on Treaties, Agreements and Protocols public hearing between Chairman of Committee and Minister of Transportation over railway loan. By also Governorship Election Tribunal nullifies Governor Doye Diri's election, calls for rerun in 90 days. Governor appeals. Oyo State Government Inspector General of Police launched a manhunt for suspected serial killer after escape from police custody. Plus, in Mali, group of soldiers oust President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Military leaders defy ECOWAS intervention. News round begins with hearing of the House of Representatives Committee on Treaties, Agreement and Protocols, where the chairman of the committee, Nicolas Sosai, and the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, took on each other in a heated argument. The committee is taking a look at the terms of the $500 billion loan agreement between Nigeria and China for the federal government's railway projects. The House of Representatives Committee on Treaties, Agreements and Protocols reconvenes after a three-week break for an investigative hearing into Nigeria's loan agreements. Government agencies and ministers have been invited, including the Minister of Transportation, who at the last hearing pleaded with the committee to halt its investigation in order not to scare the Chinese government away from giving the loan. As the hearing proceeds, a heated argument ensues between the Minister of Transportation and the committee chairman on an alleged $33 billion contract. Can you provide this honorable committee with satisfied copies of labor plan, training programs carried out, and beneficiaries, and evidence of number of Nigerians working in all aspects of this project vis-à-vis -vis their Chinese counterpart as provided in that agreement document. The only contract we've awarded so far is $1.6 billion contract for Lagos Ibadan, which is under threat. The, the Can you speak to the questions I asked you now? You see, I told you from the beginning. I have a choice. I, I, excuse, I, me, sir, excuse me, sir. I have, I have, can I, have I please? Can I, I have two choices. Please, please. You got to let me speak excuse or me. I stop. Excuse me. I said when you ask questions with time, you answer the question directly. The minister is also unable to give the exact number of Nigerians working on the rail project. Mr. Chairman, there are over, over, over 20,000 workers. Only 560 of them are Chinese. 560, and I wish to submit the document. Can we have the document? Because we need to begin to say the truth to can Nigerians. We, can we have the document? Uh, Mr. We, Chairman, I beg to submit the document. Nah. Don't worry, I know the, I know the we house. Will I know when to that. This goes on for a while and even extends to the committee when a member tries to make a contribution. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm only trying to guide you. You can't guide me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, we do respect. You do respect. Mr. Chairman, we do Please. respect. I'm your uh, senior in this parliament and I can guide you. Uh, okay. Honor Honorable member, you are co-opted into this committee. You are co-opted into this committee. Okay, thank you, my I'm chairman. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm you in charge. You have your way, you have please, your Please, I'm in charge of this committee. Thank please. you, are. thank you. The minister insists that the investigation of the committee has a political undertone and points fingers directly at the chairman. Because it's good to tell Nigerians the truth. This is very political. Nobody is telling lies. And I will show all Nobody the contracts said. awarded by the PDP government since you want to bring this up. Mr. Sir. Chairman, sir. It's, it's important, I tell you, sir, that that contract was signed as a prelude to a loan. And there is no loan. And we may not get the loan because of you, Mr. Chairman. Because of the committee you've set up against the China loan, South-South, that contract is from Lagos to Calabar, which is the whole of the South-South. Mr. Chairman, we may not get that loan, so there's no contract. I am talking about the same contract you told me of this particular... Which of them? The 2016 contract you talked about? Yes, this one. Which of them? This if you're talking about the South-South, you just ask me. You want, to, you want to meet the South-South contract? All the contract? Do you want to meet the South-South contract? If you want to meet, say you want to meet it, let's go to the other one. You, can you listen to me? Follow me. If we continue to serve our geopolitical zone, this country will not be nice. If 
zone A gets their fair share. And next year, have you not approached me on South South? Have you not approached me on South South Rail? Have you not approached me on South South Rail? You have. I have not. Mr. Chairman, you have approached me. It's okay. As the minister's voice continues to raise, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, who appears visibly upset, storms the hearing and calls for a break. Sorry, what's going on? Uh, gentlemen, please, can we just take a break for, for about 10, 10 to 15 minutes, please? Let's take a break for 10 to 15 minutes. When the hearing resumes, the initially tensed atmosphere is doused, and some calm is observed from both the committee yeah, chairman and the minister of transportation. According to item B in the, the committee chairman B, insists that in signing the loan agreement with the Chinese no. government, the minister of finance disobeyed a presidential directive. But the ministry insists that every loan agreement is approved by the president. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. From the House of Representatives to the Bielsa Governorship Election Tribunal sitting in Abuja, this time the tribunal has nullified the election of Governor Doyediri six months after the apex court declared him duly elected and ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct a fresh election within 90 days. Meanwhile, Mr Doyediri says he's appealing the verdict of the tribunal. <laughs> First, it was victory for Governor Duyediri of Bielsa State as the Governorship Election Tribunal delivered judgment in his favor on three petitions. But by Monday, August the 17th, it was judgment day at the last sitting of the Election Tribunal. First is the petition of the advanced Nigeria Democratic Party, which was excluded from the election because the deputy governorship candidate did not meet the requirements for the election. For over two hours, the tribunal gives grounds for nullifying the election, insisting that the Independent National Electoral Commission lacks the power to disqualify any candidate in an election. We have documentary evidence. We warn them that please pre present your uh, decision and they went ahead and disqualified, they disqualified us and excluded us from the ballot paper. In a dissenting judgment, the chairman of the tribunal, Justice Mohammed Sirajo, explains that the ANDP stands disqualified, having nominated a candidate that did not meet the requirements for the election. This was a case of a political party that brought a candidate that was underage, which was a deliberate attempt in order to create this situation of unlawful exclusion to come to court and begin to file petitions. The second petition is that of the Accord Party, which alleges that the Deputy Governor of Bielsa State forged his National Youth Service Corps certificate. The tribunal dismissed the petition for lacking in merit. Following the judgment in Abuja, the Bielsa State capital, Yanagua, is the next stop. Here, members of the State House of Assembly visit Governor Duyediri to pledge their support despite the judgment. We respect the law. Um, it's a process. It's a process. He has continued to proceed to the appeal court. So he still remains the governor of the state. For the state governor, the battle is not over as he is appealing the judgment. The chairman of the tribunal has said that the judgment by the other two judges is not correct. And he has read his own judgment. See, as far as he's concerned, the governor remains validly elected. The tribunal has given INEC 90 days to conduct a fresh election, as it believes it wrongly excluded the advanced Nigeria Democratic Party from the November 16, 2019 poll. Now to Oyo State, where the government has launched a manhunt for a suspected serial killer. 19-year-old Sunday Shodipo, after he escaped from Mokola Police Station, where he was being held pending his next arraignment in court over a series of murders. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police has also ordered the rearrest of the suspected serial killer as he condemned the unfortunate escape of the suspect. Long faces, apprehensive and uncertain of what the future holds for their communities. Seated here are friends and relatives who are still mourning the loss of loved ones. Within two weeks in the month of May, 
six people were murdered in cold blood in their homes and places of worship, all within Akiele local government. The police made headway on July the 17th when three suspects were paraded in connection with the murders. 19-year-old Sunday Shodipe was at the center of it all as he confesses to killing six people, narrating how he went about the killings. Before going to kill people, I reported the herbalist who prepares me for my mission by chanting incantations on me and applying a substance on my tongue three times. It tells me the rights to perform once I kill my victims and asks me to wait five minutes after killing them. I have killed in six different places. On Thursday, 11th of August, the suspect escaped from police custody. Two days after, on Thursday 13th, another woman was killed in the same area. On Sunday 16th of August, the police issued a release that Sunday had escaped from their custody at Mokola Police Station, where he was being held in compliance with court directives. This raises tension in the town as community leaders eventually meet with the government and security agencies to find a way out of the chaos. She is a growing that the killer is on the loose to prey on innocent people. Another case of murder will be totally unacceptable to the government, hence a manhunt. The Inspector General of Police, um, His Excellency the Executive Governor, they've given the matching order to the um, Commissioner of Police in Oyo State and all his officers to work with our people in the community to ensure that um, that suspect is rearrested. Um, and not just rearrested, to also ensure that all those cases are investigated to logical conclusion. A tactical team of police officers has been deployed, but with a warning. Residents must not take the laws into their hands. When they see him, they should arrest and immediately hand him over to the police. This comes as youth groups within the state have threatened to begin series of protests by the end of the month if the suspect is not apprehended, at a time seen by many as critical in a race to protect the vulnerable. The federal government has approved the sum of 13.3 billion naira for the takeoff of community policing initiative across the country. This is part of measures aimed at addressing the security situation in the country. After the approval of the funds, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, also described the structure and operation of the initiative at a news conference to mark the first year of the Ministry of Police Affairs. As part of measures to contain insecurity in the country, the federal government approved the sum of 13.3 billion naira for the takeoff of community policing across the country. <laughs> At the last meeting of the National Economic Council, its ad hoc committee on security and policing made the presentation on the operationalization of community policing in the country. At this event, to mark one year of the creation of the Ministry of Police Affairs, the Inspector General of Police explains the structure and operation of the initiative. The idea and what we are implementing is that the community should take responsibility for policing their communities at a certain level. And the implementation has gone far. So far, we have inaugurated state community policing advisory committee in all the states of the federation. These committee are the ones to help us identify within the walks, the uh, villages, and the towns. They are all citizens. Speaking on the achievements of the ministry in the last one year, the Minister of Police Affairs reveals plans by the federal government to revive the national public security communication system. We have taken the task of resuscitating the gigantic 470 million national public security communication system network that will generate thousands of well-paying jobs 
when it is fully implemented. In line with the Federal Government Executive Council conclusion, a concessionaire and baseline auditors were appointed to assess and re-evaluate the project so as to prepare a new business case for consideration by the government. While on this project and by the grace of God, we will make efforts to ensure that this project come to realization by the grace of God. The Minister when News Round returns in just a moment, Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 announces that international flights will resume on August the 29th. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Our website, channelcv.com, has more information for you on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from the respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and Roku. Also remember that when you get the Channel TV or Channel 24 app, you can catch up with news updates on the go, plus the eyewitness feature, which was designed for you to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the apps, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. International flights will now resume on August the 29th this year. That's coming from the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, during the briefing said only the international airports in Abuja and Lagos will operate for the time being. It's a bi-weekly news conference of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 in Abuja as the Minister of Aviation announces the commencement of international flights. International flights will resume from the 29th of August 2020. It will start just like we did with the domestic it will start with Lagos and Abuja. So what would happen is that very close to your departure date, as much as close to your departure date, you will take a test, COVID test, where you're coming from. There will also be a portal that will be open. Prior to your departure, you will pay through that platform. You pay through that platform uh, for a test to be done here in Nigeria day eight after your arrival. The task force chairman speaks on the level of compliance with the safety protocols as YEC candidates begin the examination just as he announces the termination of all evacuation flights. We wish to state that all evacuation flights will end by the 25th August 2020 after which Airports will be given sufficient time to prepare for reopening. The daily cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria has continued to reduce in the last few days. However, the Ministry of Health once again is misinterpreting the low cases to mean that the battle is being won, just as the Nigeria Center for Disease Control emphasizes the need for more testing. The low figures we are observing by the time the spread of uh, sample collection sites and diagnostics goes into all local government areas and we're able to collect samples and test, then we shall know whether the, it's, a, it's, it's a, a, a standard phenomenon or whether it is just temporary. So the verification and validation, let me call it validation, will uh, need to be conducted before we can begin to say yes, uh, uh, it is leveling out. We also need all Nigerians to take responsibility and play their part. And that means if you develop any of these symptoms, or even mild symptoms, weakness, tiredness, get tested, please. Nigeria has recorded over 49,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 from the over 352,600 samples collected so far.
The West African Senior Secondary Certification Examination has commenced despite the COVID-19 pandemic and the Examination Council is optimistic of a good outing. Our next report examines the conduct of the examination across states in the country. The stakes in the WIAC examinations are high. Students spend collectively thousands of hours each year in preparation. Four months have passed. Nobody predicted that the greatest disruption in all will come from a virus. But that is slowly changing as the registrar of WIAC himself inspects the procedures and conduct of the students in Agadimbi Grammar School as well as the Millennium Grammar School in Ikeja as the examinations commence. That's part of the challenge of COVID-19. They are making use of 23 classrooms. And you know it's not easy to go around 23 classrooms. But the good thing is that we have made adequate arrangement for this. Still within Lagos, the principal of Akidimbi Grammar School in Lagos believes that the stakes are high. But even higher is the challenge the education system presents at this time. Uh, we have our students in classes, a class that should have accommodated 60, we have only 20, in order to have the, uh, the distancing. Grammar school in Ogun State, like that in Lagos, saw an orderly conduct of COVID-19 protocol check. Temperatures reading and washing of hands are strictly observed before entry into the exam field hall. But it is sure to test the efficacy of virtual learning on the COVID-19 conditions. When the lockdown was lifted, we had a program on revision. We did that the week before the last and the last week. Away from the West, government secondary school in Wusei, the heart of the FCT, witnessed social distancing in its finest. Washing of hands is integral to keep the virus at bay. Government has provided in excess the face mask, the sanitizer, the wash and stations, as you can see. In Uyo, the Akwaibum state capital, the Nigerian Christian Institute, one of the centers for the WIAC exams, is no different. Social distancing is the order. A mild challenge was, however, encountered from the start. Unfortunately, the government didn't give us much time to get them back into a mindset of being in school. But luckily, our children already were prepared, and so brushing them up, it has been stressful for them. Zero, six, three. So, a student in Yenagua, the Bayelsa State Capital, Central APA Secondary School, where question papers are distributed, the subject, mathematics, with deep concerns raised for this year's exams. Government have, uh, have, have done its best and uh, want to commend them. They've done their part. I think it's left for the students to also do their part. In the wake of the health crisis, education policymakers in West Africa may have to re-strategize to ensure that the standard of education at all levels doesn't drop. Gimba Umar, Channels Television News. News Round rounds off in Mali, where the military leaders say they will not release President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita nor accept any foreign interference. As a delegation of African leaders visit the country, the opposition coalition says Ibrahim Boubacar Keita is also safer with them for now. The group of soldiers detained Malian President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita on Tuesday. Shortly after, Mr. Keita announced his resignation on the national broadcaster at midnight. The military leaders promised to set up a civilian transitional government in the country and hold new elections. And that's the news round this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenyola Shibu Ali.